We are English 9 students documenting stories of former students to celebrate Esquimalt High's centennial celebrations. We want to hear what alumni are doing now and what Esquimalt means to them. Uh, we really appreciate you sharing your story with us. So, yeah, um, pleasure. Uh, thank you. So the first question is, uh, what years did you attend Esquimalt? Uh, I was at Esquimalt from 2000 to 2004. Uh, so how is this final different from other schools that you may have attended? Well, I did all my high school at Esquimalt, actually. I grew up in Esquimalt, went to uh, Rock Heights when it was um, still an elementary school. So uh, I went there for grades kindergarten to seven, and then went straight to Esquimalt High School. So, um, I mean, I couldn't compare it to others, it, only that we were really proud to be from where we were from. And uh, we always like going and playing, uh, playing against the other team, uh, the other schools, and everything. And there was a lot of pride in our, uh, you know, in our school spirit, I guess. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay. So, um, what was your favorite class or program? Um, history, definitely. Yeah, we had an amazing, amazing teacher. I'm sure you'll hear this from other people, uh, but Mr. Dodds was. Uh, I mean, he won tons of awards. I think he won. I don't know, like nas national teaching awards and stuff, but he just brought it to life. And then uh, definitely uh, uh, French as well. We had a great French teacher. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, we're actually in French version. Oh, are you? Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, thank you. All right. So um, what is your, the, what is the best memory that you made out at Scarlet High School? Well, um, we had a French program, uh, a, a France trip that... Um, oh. We did every year, or like that was offered every year, right. and in grade 10 I went on that, and uh, that was, I mean, that was amazing. That was like life-altering experience, I think. I mean, I came back from that, and it totally changed kind of what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go, and yeah, so that was amazing. Oh, nice. Actually, the, um, the grade 10s just got back a couple weeks ago from that trip. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it, it, it really... Uh, takes you like it's, it's such a great opportunity as a young person to be able to travel and right. experience some of that independence and some of that culture um it just it gets the bug in you and then you just want to travel all the time <laughs> yeah nice yeah so um how did attending a squad all contribute to what you did or to what you do today or your career plans well it made me want to as i say it made me want to travel and uh, it also um I guess like the languages, the bands, I mean I was in band, the Squamal always had a really good band program. So it was kind of just an openness to learning and um, and also the community sense, I guess. That's one thing that's really stuck with me is I have a lot of, I mean I have a lot of friends that I went to high school with that I still keep in touch with. And um, yeah, so a real sense of camaraderie and stuff. It, get, it keeps you rooted, I think, even when you might be living, you know, somewhere far away. So yeah. yeah. Um, if you could think of the times you felt successful and were to pick one, can you tell us about that? Um, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess like in ac like academic success, I guess you know, getting accepted to go to um, do my master's degree in University of Edinburgh was a was a really nice feeling of success. You know, you put a lot of effort into your your school and it, uh, you know, it all builds up to certain points where it's, um, you know, where a big decision waits and, you know, that's when you find out if it all pays off, I guess. And yeah, so that was, that was a great feeling. Wow, great. So, um, do you, did you go on any school trips or did you participate in any teams? Yeah. So as I say, I went on that trip to France, oh, yeah. but in <laughs> addition to, uh, Let's see. In addition to that, well, we had a what was that class called? It was like it was like a sports class. Leadership. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. What was it? What was it called? Athletic leadership. Yeah, and we got to I take a lot of down. yeah, a lot of good trips and like day trips and I think there might have even been an overnight trip or something at one point. But yeah, yeah it was it was um there were some really good times there. Got to take some great adventures. And uh, oh, and the Barkley Sound trip. Um, I don't know if I don't know if you guys still do that or not. But we went for like when you when you graduated, you know, in your grade twelve year, you could go to.
for a seven day canoe trip up in the Broken Islands up near uh, Port Alberni. And oh. you were just camping out on, on islands with no electricity, no food but what you brought, you know, like just out under the stars and it was it was amazing. And we canoed every day for miles between islands and stuff. We saw whales and seals and yeah. God sounds excellent. Yeah. So um could you describe your job to us? Um, yeah, so I'm working for the Scottish government um, as an environmental analyst, and my job is mm, it's mostly about coming up with and testing policy and collecting environmental data, mostly about carbon and climate change, and um, coming up. It, my my job title is circular economy analyst, so it has to do with material circularity and trying to be really resource efficient, um, you know, as a way of reaching climate change targets that we've set. Yeah. So, uh, Jack has a question here. So uh, when, um, when you were in high school, did you, um, did you think you would be going this far across the world to, to, for work, or did you, um, did you think you'd be in the environmental category for work? Yeah, I, um, I knew I wanted to travel, and uh, as I say from that France trip, and when I finished high school, um, I mean, when I was in my grade 12 year, I had a job and uh, I had a car and I sold my car and I worked a lot. And then uh, my, me and my three best friends went to Europe uh, right after grade 12 and we traveled for a year. And then um, so so that, you know, like I, I had been to Europe before. I really liked it. And then I, I, I moved and lived in France for a year, um, two years later. And before I went back to to school to university, so I had spent time in Europe. I really liked it, and uh, it feels nice to, you know, to to feel like you're bringing something new to the table and learning a lot at the same time, which is what you get when you're traveling and living in a different place. I think. So I didn't know I'd be here. I didn't know I'd be working here. But I always really liked environmental issues and politics, and I always thought they were really important and something I wanted to do. And uh, it just happens that I'm here now, so yeah, just keeping an open mind, I guess. Yeah. So, do you have any uh, particular stories from your work that you can share with us? From my work, let me think. Um. Well, okay, I guess, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I I uh, recently went to um, to uh, the Netherlands. For um, a, some software training, so I spent uh, I spent three days in a pretty nice hotel and uh, got to hang out in not Amsterdam. It was this s smaller city called Amersfoort, which was really nice and uh, really beautiful. Lots of canals, and um, so I'm learning like really cool software during the day that's really useful. But during the night, we got to go out. Um, the, all the people in the training, and there were guys who were there was a two people who worked for Formula One, the race car team, that they were learning about fuel. They were they were there to find out about how to make the best, most environmentally safe fuel. And then there were other people there from like an airline uh, manufacturing company and, you know, all, all over the place. And we all went out for drinks and, and dinner afterwards and then we went to the bar and, you know, so it was really cool. Just I got to meet with specialists from all over the world who were coming for this training who I never would have met otherwise and uh, you know really got to share some kind of cross-cultural experiences there were people as I say there were people from uh, the Middle East there were people from the States from Asia so yeah it was really cool oh very cool so um, do you know if the Squamalt is very different from when you attended or have, have you noticed any improvements or renovations <laughs> it's not really <laughs> 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 uh, I haven't. I haven't. Yeah, right. So we'll have to show you around. So uh, you might have heard from Mr. Orm, but we replaced the gym floor this year. And you replaced the what? The gym floor. Oh wow. Also, um. The tennis courts the, have been got, replaced. We got new tennis courts. Oh, so they finally put new tennis courts in. Yeah, they're really good tennis courts too. Oh, yeah, right on. Yeah, because they were starting to look like Jumanji or you know the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also. The windows. The windows, yeah, the windows. They, they put um, colored windows in. They put uh, like stained stained glass windows in, oh. and it, it looks really uh, sweet. Nice. Well, that sounds all right. And do you guys still have like shop class and metal class and yeah. woodworking? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. And what about bands? Do they do that? Uh, yeah, there's still bands. I don't think any of us participate in it, but yeah, yeah there's still bands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Did you have a info infotech class when you were there? No, you know, it's funny. I bet that's something that's changed a lot, but uh, I went through all of high school. I probably was one of the last, you know, years that went through high school without ever really needing to use the computer for anything. Like, I th- I'm pretty sure I, r- I hand wrote everything I submitted. Um, like, anytime I used the internet, it was more of a, for f- I don't know, like for fun or something. Like, I never used, I always used books for research or learning or anything. But, I mean, by the time I got to university, you know, I barely touched a, a book compared to how much I was using the, you know, how much I was using computers and everything. So that probably has changed. I don't know. You tell me. I mean, do you use the computers a lot more? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Like yeah. 90, 90% of assignments are now on computers and stuff. Right. And do you learn, do you learn, like, how to use programs or anything? Or? Uh, uh, yeah, usually in, in elementary school now, um, like, going to the computer lab and learning how to use computers is, is a mandatory course. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, but I guess we learn, like, the simple programs, but we won't learn anything complex, sadly. Okay. There's no, yeah, yeah, unless you want to take a special course to do that. Well, I guess, it de- I guess it depends on what you want to do, but one thing I've certainly uh, come to appreciate is Excel. I mean, yeah. man, if you learn... <laughs> If you learn how to use Excel, you will, uh, I mean, I only have been learning the last, like, year or two. I, I didn't know anything about it before, but it's a good sk- good skill set to pick up for a lot of things. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so um, if you had to, ch- had to choose a symbol for Esquimalt, what would it be and why? A symbol? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It would have to be something, like, badass, but also smart. You know, yeah. like I think it's so like I don't know I'm thinking you know maybe like I mean eagle sounds a little too cliche you know like so we need something a little more west coast and a little less like more Canadian maybe I don't know I'm thinking like an orca would work you know what do you guys think uh, so much what you said about the eagle actually uh, our mascot is a raven Oh, perfect, Raven, right. Okay, so, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, so that sounds like the perfect mascot. I think that's a well-chosen mascot, actually. Yeah, it blends in with, like, the native culture. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and the Raven's obviously known for being really, like, smart and intelligent, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right, so um, what advice would you give to future Esquimalt students? Um, well, I would say, uh, well, other than the Excel, <laughs> I would yeah. say, uh, I would say, um, don't, r- don't rush into post-secondary school, you know, like don't rush into university, uh, feel f- like, don't feel pressured to do it. I know a lot, I had a lot of friends who felt like they had to go right from high school into university and they burnt out, you know, you've already done 13 years straight of school and and sometimes you need to like maybe take a break to find out what you actually want to do and it's a great time to you know save up a little money and go and get some life experience I really really recommend traveling after high school just take go somewhere crazy take yourself completely out of your comfort zone you will learn more in that year of travel than you will have in a year of school I mean that's it's an amazing you just everything like I don't know if you guys make your own food every day or like wash your own clothes or have to look after your own finances or figure out how to get from A to B in a strange city or I mean like all of these things are just you become a much more confident and capable person which is what you need in life you know because when you leave high school you're an adult you gotta you know the only one responsible is you so get out there and enjoy it you know that's what I would say yeah it's excellent so um do you have any questions for us or yeah us yeah well what do you so yeah what do you three guys Wanting to do what grade? What grades are you in, and what what do you have in mind? Oh, we're in grade nine. Grade nine. Okay, so you're now it just starts in grade nine now, right? It's going high. Yeah. 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 So how do you like it so far? I personally really like it. I, I like how it's uh, small. I guess I like it how it's smaller than um, 
than like other high schools, and it's like more more of a community, I guess. Yeah. And it's it's very diverse. That's what I like about it. Yeah. I also like, like the um, athletic leadership. Like I'm taking it right now. I really like it. Cool. And, um, the teachers are pretty cool, and yeah, it's, it's a lot better than middle school. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. what about you, Shingo? Uh, I really enjoy it too. Yeah, it's um, there's a lot more that it offers, and I guess if you have something really specific that you want to do, you can actually select that course, and it's um, there's a lot more options. I really like that. Yeah. And do you find you're you're mixing up with the older students at all? Have you gotten a chance to meet some of the? Um. Yeah, we do. Well, some classes we we take with the older kids. Yeah. Um, like Jim or I'm taking a class called uh, Cinema, which is a uh, French comprehension class. So oh, we yeah. watch movies and uh, there's grade 11s in that class. It's well. mandatory. Yeah, it's yeah. mandatory. Oh, right. Yeah. And then is yeah. it Carm, right? Carm? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Carm, what about you? What do you think? I love the athletics program. That's why I won't. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what happened? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, a weed whacker fell on his arm. A weed whacker what? Fell on his arm. How, how'd that happen? I was just like weed whacking a ditch and then I slipped. And, yeah. Oh, brutal, man. <laughs> uh, that sounds painful. So what do you guys what do you guys think you want to do when you leave high school? Um, well, I'd like to go to Japan for a year as soon as I graduate. Because I was actually, I was originally born there and um, I go there maybe once every two years, but just during the summer, but I think I want to explore it more and you know, know, know more about the country I was from. Yeah, well, that sounds like, like a great idea. China and Europe as well. Yeah? Yeah. I think I'd like to just go to a resort and just relax. <laughs> yeah. Just relax for a bit and, and then think about things. Yeah? And just relax. Cause well, I, if, you, I, I, if you speak some Spanish, maybe you could... Uh, you could get down to Mexico or something. Yeah, I've, I think I've, I've already been to Mexico once, and my Spanish is, like, horrible. I know, like, two or three words, but... Isn't it mandatory for us Spanish? Yeah, uh, yeah, well, I guess we learn Spanish now. Like, it's mandatory. Next year? Next year for us. Really? So, not not French? Uh, no, it is French. We're going to be learning um, Spanish in, in French. French. Yeah. And oh, we'll also... oh, right, because you yeah. guys are immersion. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we speak fluent French, and well, I guess we'll soon be speaking a little bit of Spanish. But I guess I'd go to like Dominican Republic or like Haiti, where they where they already speak French there. Yes. Yeah. France. Yeah. Nah, France doesn't have the good resorts. <laughs> Won't be as cheap. And what about you, Kern? I'd love to like take a break for a year and find out what I really want to do, and then just get it over with. <laughs> yeah. 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 Get on, get on to making paychecks, hey? Yeah. Oh, I tell you, when you've been at school for a while and and then you finally get that first paycheck, you just go out and spend it all in like a week. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> all right, excellent. Thank you so much. So I think. Mr. Ron. Uh, do you have any final comments? Yeah, he just gave us a final comment. No, I just thought I think this is a really neat idea, guys, and. Uh, I think you're doing a really cool thing. A great way to celebrate a local institution. Thank you so much. All right, that that, that concludes our interview. Okay. uh, Thank you so much for helping us. It's uh, it's really fun. Okay, guys. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Bye.